church bring us this beautiful story at the time of the Easter season? You think we might be looking at another story of Jesus' post-resurrection appearance to, one, uh, to his disciples. But I'll tell you why the church brings this beautiful story of the multiplication of loaves and fish to feed the hungry people. Because one of the most effective witnesses we can give that Jesus is risen is the charity we do, the care we have for other people. I think of Mother Teresa of Calcutta, blessed Mother Teresa now, on her way to canonization. She brought more people to the church, not because she preached the gospel, like took out a catechism and started preaching to all the people that were dying and sick and hungry on the streets of Calcutta and all over India. They became Catholic because she loved them. She gave them food. She comforted them. She cared for them when they were sick or dying. And they were so moved by her goodness that they wanted to believe belong to that goodness. And if that was the God that she believed that they wanted to belong to, Remember the first man that she took care of, he said, I lived like a poor animal in the street, but I died like an angel in your arms. That's what living the gospel can do. When we live love, when we live charity, when we give of ourselves and the talents and gifts that God has given us, we can be such an effective witness to bring people to Christ and that Christ will bring them all to home. But the key to always be charitable is that before we can give the Lord our gifts, we first have to give them ourselves. We first have to put ourselves in His hands, to trust Him, to believe in Him, to really believe so much that we put everything of our whole being in His hands. I remember our beloved uh, Pope, the late great John Paul II, when he was preaching in Scotland in 1979, he told the young people there, because he had the same gospel, he told them that the world was waiting for the good news, and if they just dared to trust Jesus enough, if they just dared to put themselves in the Lord's hands, totally, completely, all they are, their time, their talents, their treasures, every bit of their being, that Jesus could multiply their gift and do miracles for the world, and be a living testimony to Christ. He's right on. Absolutely, I'll tell you why. If you just try to give charity, we have a big word for that, it's called social justice. If you try to give social justice without what I call individual justice, what's individual justice? A relationship with God, a relationship that comes from surrendering everything that I am to God first, making Him first. Or as we say in that first great commandment, to love the Lord your God with all your heart, not 75%, not 92%, 98%. All your heart, all your mind, all your soul, all your strength. Unless you start there, then you'll never be able to sustain the second commandment. You'll love your neighbor. What you, I'll tell you what will happen when you do social justice, without individual justice and holiness, what begins to happen is one of a couple things. Either you will burn out, because why? Because you're not hooked into the source. If you try to keep going and giving of yourself without having your soul be filled, guess what? You empty out yourself. But if you're always hooked into it, like if you're like a pipe from the river, pouring water into the fields, you'll just go on forever just being that channel of grace. But if you don't, if you just try to carry the bucket time and time, guess what? You'll tire out, and then what happens? You either get very, very bitter and frustrated, or you begin to be, you forget the reasons why you do it, and you start manipulating things, and you start becoming very self-centered. And that's one of the big things that's happened sometimes in the church itself. People got involved in social justice, but they forgot the individual justice, and they became just like social workers, and then they tire out very quickly, and they lead the enterprise. Or they just go off on their own, start their own business doing that, and get very wealthy from it. They forget. That's why it's always important for us first to come to the Lord 
put ourselves all in his hands that our big, great, holy father said, put them in your hands. And then he can multiply your gifts and talents. And when you do that, boy, do you become an effective witness. When you can give of yourself, and that's what it's supposed to be. You see, what's happened is that people have forgotten that it's our call to take care of people around us. It's not a government's job, it's our job. The government's been taking over because people have forgotten about loving God with all their heart and soul. They've lost their charitable side of themselves. So the government's starting to pick it up more and more, and people are sitting back lazy. And we wonder why the gospel's not being promoted. It's best promoted when we do the absolute charity because it comes from the heart of God. And we put ourselves there, and we have an absolutely unlimited amount of resources because we're just like a, a pipe that keeps channeling God's infinite grace to all these people through loving acts. And God multiplies our gifts of time and talent and treasure so we can continue. We can become a powerful witness. And the way you do it is you start today. You start here. When you come to Holy Eucharist, you're not just giving you, uh, getting the body and blood of Jesus Christ. That's the most wonderful gift. But first, we're giving. All the, that bread and wine that comes up, that's a symbol of your life. You're saying, Jesus, I'm putting myself there. I'm giving you everything I am. And I promise always to start there, to give you all that I am. Heart, mind, soul, body, all the gifts and talents you give me, I give it all to you in the symbol of bread and wine. And I know that you will then transform it by the Spirit of your love, and by your Holy Word. That becomes a model for my life. So when I receive you, Jesus, now moving from this deep, beautiful, abiding relationship with you, now I can move out on, with unlimited resources to start right at school showing charity. How do you become a real charitable person? You start at school being kind to people, learning how to get along with people that are different than you. You know, that's one of the beautiful things that I've had. I love to have a lot of kids in our school because guess what? You meet all kinds of personalities, some you don't mesh with. That's okay. You're not going to be best friends with everybody, but you got to be charitable to everybody. you got to learn how to respect and reverence everybody. So you get a great chance to practice charity every day, putting up with people that sometimes are jerks. Yeah. Some people can be jerky, but we're supposed to love them anyway. Huh? To love them. And how else do we, do we start practicing charity? You know, in the, even in the classroom. See, how can you become an effective instrument, young people, if you don't put your mind to work? You know, you should make your teacher's job the easiest thing in the world because you're doing your homework, you're, you're diligent about doing it, really working hard at it, because you want to train your mind and your soul to become this incredible instrument so when you go out, you don't go out just to make money. I'm glad if you can make money. But I've told you many times before, is the purpose of life to be a multi-millionaire or billionaire? No. Because guess what's going to happen to you? What's one certain thing that's going to happen to you? That we know every human happens to every human being. We're going to die. die. Of course we are. And why do we work so hard and then leave it right there? You've got to go in the grave it's all over there. Why is it important to have a lot of resources? So you can do, after you've been blessed by God, you can do charity. You can help a ton of people. You do what we're supposed to do as great citizens of this nation. Not the government. Us. It's God's call. And it it's a wonderful opportunity when you do it to get closer to Jesus and closer to heaven. Because you know, we've heard that story in Matthew's Gospel. When they get to the end, Jesus gathers all the nations he separates the sheep from the goats. And what does he say to the, the people on the left? You're not going to come to the kingdom of God because why? Because they didn't know the catechism? No. Why did they get to go to heaven? Because when I was hungry, you didn't give me anything to eat. When I was thirsty, you didn't give me anything to drink. When I was naked, you didn't give me any of your clothes. When I was uh, alone, you didn't come to visit me. When I was in prison, you didn't take time to pray for me. Who gets to go to heaven? Those who put their hands and their lives in God's hands first 
Let Jesus multiply them with a great love in their heart and great talents, a mind, heart, all the talents. And Jesus multiplied them and they gave food to the hungry, drink to the thirsty, clothes to the naked, visited the sick and the homebound and the prisoners, comforted those who were lonely, lived out the corporal and spiritual works of mercy. That's who goes to heaven. And that's forever. That's why you want to prepare. That's why the church brings us this story in the Easter time. You want the world to know that Jesus truly risen? Put yourself in Jesus' hands first. Let him fill you and hook into his grace that's unlimited. And then go out of the world every day, in your home, in your school, wherever person you meet, and give yourself in charity time, your talent, your treasures to those who are hungry and thirsty, not just for physical things, but for spiritual things. Give yourself, and guess what? People will have more than enough in their life. And more importantly, you'll witness to Jesus, and even more importantly, you and I will get home to heaven. Amen.